It's so much easier to maintain a customer that is happy with your services than you having to constantly look for new business, new customer. Because that one satisfied customer is going to tell at least 25 people. Rise and shine, Valley Farm family. Welcome back to another episode of The Farm. If you're new here, you are most welcome. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already and also turn your notification bells on not to miss out on any episodes of The Farm. And of course, to all our returning subscribers, thank you so much. We really appreciate you guys so much and thank you so much for being part of this family and also loving Valley Farm. Guys, we are super excited to be at The Farm every day and also to share with you guys what activities are really happening at the farm and what we are intending to do at value farm you guys have really become part of this family and if we don't really share all these things with you guys it is a blame on us but anyways we are here back at the farm it's early morning as well i know most of the videos will start early morning but you know we have to share everything with you and in a farm most activities are throughout the day so early morning there's a lot that really happens and Today, we are going to be sharing with you different activities happening as well and new things that we have at the farm, new changes as well, at least to inspire someone out there, to motivate someone out there who is thinking of starting a farm, always thinking of starting maybe goats, pigs, ducks, poultry, whatever you think that you are capable of doing or whatever you're interested in so that you can pick a leaf, so that you can get something to learn from. So today we are here, so many things have been really happening, things keep on changing, routines keep on changing as well because you know different seasons come different seasons go so you have to always be flexible with the changes with how things come about so that's what we are here for and that's why we want to really share with you guys everything that we are doing at value farm well early morning as you can see we have people at the goat section we have people working in the piggery section we have our cattle somewhere that side our cows i know most of you have been asking us what is the progress with the cows are you guys intending to improve on the genetics are you guys planning to scale up the numbers as well yes that is a plan like you all know guys with value farm we always preach start small and think big and of course when you start small you definitely get experiences and you scale up your numbers so for the cows project or the cattle project we started with just one cow in the beginning and if you see the numbers right now it's unbelievable the numbers are growing at least we have some cows that have given us calves here we've benefited from the milk of the cows as well because our pigs our kid goats are also benefiting from the same cows even us we also take some of the milk back home so it is really a benefit and also another thing that i want to stress out for all farmers out there it is always advisable for you to also do mixed farming if you're a person out there and you want to think about starting a farm and you're really wondering i want only to do goats i want to do only poultry it's always advisable for you to start something that is going to help you in the long run so i would also advise you if you're doing maybe goat farming you can do a little bit of agriculture you can do a little bit of poultry it can be on a small scale but that is also going to help you in the long run i know you're hearing some kid goats in the background there <laughs> They just release them from, from the house because what really happens in the morning, our goats, let me show you guys so that you can definitely see what is happening this other side. They're coming here to feed. So what is happening, they release them outside so that they can feed before the mothers go out to graze. It's been rainy season, so we are also limiting them on going out to graze early so what is happening we leave them in the paddock here and if the rains passes we definitely bring the elephant grass we bring all the grasses in the paddock and they feed inside here 
and also we have a different paddock that we always transfer them to there's the other paddock because there are two paddocks right here this is our new goat house as you can see because i know most of you who have been here longer know that we have two goat houses we have the old one then we also have the new raised goat house which is this one here and specifically for this other one here we have the exotic goats then we also have some of the nannies so what really happens like right now the paddock was cleaned in the morning So we have different sections as well for those who have really watched the videos you know that we have different sections in this goat house here so the nannies are separated we separate them according to the to the sizes we also separate them according to the breeds as well so that's what happens here and of course the exotic goats are only in their own section we make sure that they're really taken care of because you know these are really pricey animals right here so you have to really take good care of them so these kids right here who are just released the paddock was cleaned properly. Make sure that cleanliness is very key in your farm. I must emphasize this. Cleanliness is key at your farms. If you don't want to get diseases, if you don't want you know, your, your animals, your birds to be falling sick, make sure you disinfect the places, you always sweep the places, you make sure the houses that the, the goats or maybe your pigs are sleeping should be very clean. So what happens is we do scrub these houses here at least a week, at least twice a week or three times a week and we do use our disinfectants we have the bio self we have you know different different disinfectants that we use then also of course the detergent but we really scrub with the brushes to make sure that it's really very clean and very safe for the animals so guys i know we've talked about this goats over and over and again but of course there are so many updates that are really going on some people have gone out there in the field to cut more grass for them because as these ones get out to go to the field the exotic goats are going to remain back here and of course the grasses are supposed to be brought here so that we can be able to feed the, the goats in this house or the goats that are going to remain here do you know um, another beauty about the exotic goats or the goats that remain here they also love the shrub i know i've talked about this over and over again but the shrub is one of the things that you know when we hang in that small tree right there they really love it they finish it even faster so you always have to make sure that you bring the shrub for them then we also cut some banana leaves they also love the banana leaves by the way so if you're in a place like especially in uganda most areas grow bananas and there's some leaves that you really don't even use you don't they go to waste you cut them maybe for mulching in your gardens but this leaves these banana leaves are also very important for your goats and they really love it so if you can get them then you can maybe chop for them so that they can eat they really love it because these goats i've seen it here they really love it but i also wanted to show you guys a few updates as well apart from these other goats here it's as you can see on the background this other side about the cows let's get back to the cows again we had our structure the structure was a quite you know a small one but as the numbers grew our structure got smaller as well so we decided to get for them a new home we decided to construct at least a structure that is more comfortable that is big enough for the cows to fit in and of course i'm going to take you guys there shortly so that you can see exactly what i'm talking about because our structure you know as we always tell you guys when you're beginning you start with what you have so we started with this little structure right here we thought you know it was going to be enough for them but we brought even more cows to the farm as well so i'm going to take you guys to the structure so that you can see exactly what i'm talking about guys let's go so that i can show you our new home and structure for the cows guys let's go Guys, before we even reach the, the kraal for the cows, I want to really tell you guys about something, about mixed farming, about having animals at your farm. Do you know the beauty about having animals at your farm? And if you're doing mixed farming, 
the waste from your goats, the waste from your pigs. This is going to be manure for you. So if you are planting maybe cabbages, you're planting vegetables for your staff, if you're planting, you know, passion fruits, tomatoes, you know, on a commercial scale or maybe on a small scale, this is going to be very helpful for you. Why am I saying that? You can see on the background right there, we have manure. That is the waste that we put because we do sweep all these houses every day. We do the cleaning thoroughly. So the waste that we gather from the goat house, from the two goat houses, is put somewhere that we leave at least for it to settle before we take to the garden. So this is really very advantageous. If you're a farmer out there, this doesn't go to waste. You can even use it for biogas. There, It has so many advantages apart from taking it to the garden. This is valuable and most people are looking out for manure in other farms, in other places. So if you want even to sell your own manure, it's going to be very profitable for you as well. So guys, that's what I really wanted to let you know about that as we go into our new crawl. I'm super excited guys. Very, very excited. I'm super excited. Work is still in progress guys, cause we did fence. Ta-da! Guys, I'm really super excited about all this experience, about the new home for the cows. You know, we started this as just a small project, something that is just going to help us. But with the look of things, you know, we are going to expand on the numbers, of course, and also the genetics, as I already told you earlier on. So I'm super excited to share with you guys what exactly is happening here. The construction was just done a few days ago, and I wanted to share with you guys at least something so that you can learn from Hey, I know you can you can remove all this, but just because I don't want to, you know, remove the whole sticks, I'm small enough, but I'm really super excited. As you can see on this specific place here, guys, we did fence the, the, the area, the paddock for the cows, and they have enough space. You know, with the previous structure that we had, the space was quite little. It was just small, and the cows were really confined to their own you know spaces then when they're getting out they're getting out to graze but at least here the beauty is they have enough space so guys we use some eucalyptus here eucalyptus trees some barbed wire to fence off this section because we don't want the cows to really get out also for security purposes to be safe as well so the cows are really safe on this section here. That is the beauty about it. And of course, they have enough exercising yard. As you can see, they're out here, you know? Let me show you guys the cows, this other section here. They're outside. Edward, don't eat out. So guys, let me show you guys the cows. As you can see, they're here. <laughs> their yard, they're really enjoying it. It is big enough. They have their own space separate from, you know, from the goats, separate from the other section as well. And they're a bit distant from the other animals as well. This is the beauty about it. So you can see the numbers. The numbers have really, really grown here. We have some cows that have really given us calves. Oh, by the way, guys, we have a new calf. Oh my God, Lava. Guys, we have our new calf. This is like a few days. Oh, the mom is coming for me. <laughs> no, you leave it. It's okay. And it's a female. I'm really super excited. These moms are very protective, as you can see. We have our Ankole right there. She's also amazing. Very, you know, she has given us, I think, now so far two calves already. And we are enjoying the milk from these cows, guys. It's unbelievable. How these cows here give us enough milk. I'm really super excited guys, you know, to come here to show you guys, to share with you guys our progress and our growth as well, because you know, this is what it is. Start small, but think big and also grow as well, because it's all about, you know, start with what you have as well. You don't have to really be, you know, putting so much into this, then you fail at once. You know, when they say that you invest so much and if you maybe make so many mistakes you lose a lot so it's better for you to start with a few animals gain experience from them then you can be able to continue but this is what it is here i really 
appreciate our workers, our colleagues that who are really taking care of these animals right here because they're doing an amazing job. Actually, we also have another calf. That one is there. That one I think is just a few days. It's like around five days old. Then we also have a different calf on this other side here. Very young, just a newborn, but this one is a male. I can show you guys, it's right here, taking some milk from the mama. Yeah, that is also one of the improved versions, by the way. It's really amazing, guys. You can really see these cows, wow. I'm so proud. <laughs> I'm so proud and I'm so happy to really share with you guys. Let me show you guys the shelter, how the shelter looks like and how we decided to partition them so that you can also get something to learn from. So guys, the structure is right here. At least we had to make a separation for the cows. Then we also have section for the cows. So the cows have different partitions that we have here. We shall, more work is still going on because our carpenter is definitely coming to make sure that there's a partition made there for each cow. So each cow will have its own place to stay. Then of course we have this different section here that is really enclosed for the calves because they don't sleep with their moms as well. That's why you can, most of you have been asking, why don't you leave the calves to be with the moms like in the night? It's not really advisable. It's better for you to separate them. Make sure the calves are alone. Then the, the cows, the bulls are also in a different section. Then we also have a crush. So that for the crush, it really helps us so much in case we are doing like treatment, you know, deworming. It's easy for you to definitely use that crush, put them in that partition so that it's easy for you to take care of them. So it is right there on the background. Let me take you guys there so that you can see exactly what I'm talking about, how the crush looks like so that you can get an idea. It is next to the building. It's next to the structure, as you can really see. Another thing before we go to the crush that I would really also share with you guys about this basic structure here. This is a simple structure, very simple. And we use, you know, basic material to construct it. We just use the eucalyptus. We use our, our iron sheets, then nails. That is it really, by the way. That's what we actually use for constructing, for putting up this structure right here. Very affordable. I think the most expensive thing is only the iron sheets that are really quite pricey. But we use the materials that are available, materials that are within our village. Then, of course, we also treated the poles of this eucalyptus. As you can see, we put in that other bag there so that at least it doesn't rot. At least it takes us for some time before the termites come to, dest to destroy the house. Let me take you guys that other side so that you can see that crash. And before that even, guys, we have turkeys. I know most of you have been asking us about turkeys, about our poultry, what is really happening. We do have the local birds as well. These are the local chicken. Then we have our turkeys. These have really also multiplied in numbers. I'm really so happy about it because it is really amazing to see that these turkeys are growing. The numbers have increased as well. And I'm really super excited to share with you guys this gen as well. They're right there, they're on free range. And the beauty about them, after moving around, they know where to go to later on in the evening. So they're out here just free ranging all over the place. But we also have a schedule for feeding them as well. Early in the morning and later on in the afternoon, water is available in so many different points of the farm. So these turkeys always know where to get the water from as they free range as well. So that is it. That is a by the way, guys. But let's go to the crash so that you can see what I was talking about. This is the crash that I was talking about for treatment, general monitoring. This is where they pass. So there's a connection from this other side here, as you can see. For those who are not aware of this, you see how it is constructed. This is the path. Then it connects. Why can't I enter in there? Let me go. So guys, they sleep in this other section, then the crash connects right here. This is a smaller section, so it is more easy 
and manageable to have your cows here in case you really want to treat them you want to you know monitor them check something it is easier so this is how it looks like it so enclose that other side you can easily remove this other poles here aside so that you can what so that they can go if you finish then you can pull them aside then the animal goes off so like that so if you really want them to be coming they come one by one one by one one by one that's how it looks like and the same thing to this other section here guys we do treated our poles as you can see right here we put those bags treated them for the termites not to really attack the the, the what the poles easily these are easy poles that can be got anywhere and not expensive at all guys if you have any questions if you have anything interesting that you think that have really missed out please leave your comments down below and also let me know about our structure what do you think about it was it a good idea for us to really expand it like this please leave your comments down below so that we can also hear from you guys as well but this is how it is guys i'm really super excited to always share with you some of the progresses and some of the improvements that we really have at value farm you see the connection from this other side there is also fencing so that at least it doesn't go to the other side because this is also part of the farm by the way but we had to enclose it for security purposes so that someone cannot easily come to the cow section. And of course, there's security here as well to make sure that the cows are safe enough and not so far away from the rest of the animals. So at least they are very safe, very secure right here. So guys, that was just an update for this section. Let's go to a different section. Let's go and meet my co-director as well so that we can, he can say something to you guys, share something with you guys as well about the farm. So guys, you can see I'm from exercise. <laughs> I'm from getting the salt for these cows here. Let me tell you guys, these cows love this salt here. This salt really helps them so much. Like you see, we always have the mineral blocks for the goats. So we have some salt that we give to the, to the cows as well. So this early morning, we had to definitely give them some, some, some salt and they really love it. When we just brought it in here, they were just you know, sniffing, trying to, they know it. And they're now even surrounding as you can see guys here these cows here really love it so so much and the beauty about this salt is it helps them with the micro elements that really helps them that they don't get from the grass as well so it really helps them so much then also helps them so much with the drinking of water it helps them to take more water as well my colleague right there is putting into the trough because we have their feeding trough just right here that we give them so we are going to pour it there and they can't wait to really have it. That's what is really happening here. You see this Ankole cow here with the long horns? These are the traditional cows that we have in Uganda. And they're not that very, very friendly, guys. They're not tough at all. Let me show you guys the, how it really looks like. It's right there, as you can see, guys. That's the mineral salt that they're going to lick. They're going to lick and eat at the same time. You see, all of them can't wait. All of them have come here. They really love it so much. Very nutritious, guys. So we are going to give them. Now this is the time they can come closer to you because they need the salt, isn't it? You need the salt. Huh? This is over. So guys, my co-director is also right here. After making his round, you know, he's been very busy up and down, making sure everything is really right at the farm. I'm really super excited that he's here with us at least to say something, say hello to the people, and also say something to our fellow farmers out there. Well, hello everybody. My name is co-director Grafton, proud member of the Value Farm family. 
obviously you can tell by the background we're standing with the cows mm -hmm. we are guests and we are not wanted guests in this place. <laughs> yeah so uh forgive the wind because i'm sure it's whipping and we don't have a dead cat so we apologize for that mm. but i gotta tell you guys this right we actually have to come into this section because where the cows were initially staying um it wasn't the best location yeah. they were pretty much um squeezed they were a bit too squeezed but they had to have their own paddock. They're way happier here. You know, what's, what's interesting about where they sleep, you know, even though we changed the housing situation, but they all know exactly where to go. Yeah. <laughs> In the section of the house for them to sleep, they get along together. But then the thing I actually wanted to make sure that we, we, we keep reiterating to you guys, right? Even us, we have a wonderful staff, we have hardworking people here, but it's the importance of you, the owner, being on the ground because we actually have a few other things that's been kind of pulling us away from here for at least the last two weeks, right? Yeah. Exciting updates will be coming, coming soon. Coming up soon, yeah. And you guys will see that with your own two eyes really, really, really soon. And so um, what we ended up doing, by not being able to be here as regularly as we used to be, yeah. We could just tell by stepping onto the campus, mm. the energy was different. Yeah. The morale is different. The level of cleanliness it's quite is different. different, right? So the reason I'm, I'm mentioning this to you guys here, you know, your business is your business. You know, you may have the w employees that may love you. They may care for you personally, but this is not their business. So the way you're gonna care for your business, whether it's a car, your house, particularly a farm and investment like this, mm. if you can't be present on the ground, we will hear, we will, we will somewhat semi, you know, reduce in terms of our presence by just two weeks. Yeah. And to find the status that we found, to me, it was shocking. Now think about you who lives in Kampala and you decide to come to your farm. Some people Once take every a month. Three months. Mm -hmm. Some people take three, three months. months. Some people yeah, take true. literally you know, a month and a half to two months where they don't come to the farm, they call. And of course, your employees will always give you the same answer. How's everything there? Everything, everything is, is always okay. fine. Everything is always fine. We're good. Everything's okay. But then once you get to the ground, that's when you see the reality, mm. right? So I wanted to make sure we stress that point. But in our case, you know, we're fortunate because we actually have good people. Yeah. You know, we actually have a vet here. You know, we haven't had any massive disease outbreak. Things that have been managed professionally. But again, by you, meaning in this case us, not being able to be here consistently, we saw a huge difference. That is so, so true. be aware of that. But then the beauty about farm, guys, about the farming industry, we always stress to you guys the, the importance of you being flexible. Yeah. Flexibility is key. Because in the beginning, I, I'm not ashamed to tell you guys this, I never could have imagined, right, having cows. <laughs> that was just never my thing. That is true. You know, in fact, the initial cows that we purchased as a team was for one purpose and one purpose only, mm. to feed our pigs, and to feed the goats, mm. and for the staff to have some milk to drink every once in a while. But now the flock by simply having these cows is growing. It's growing. Now. And by the nature of our business, right? You know, we actually need to get a lot more cows. We definitely need to improve the overall genetics True. of the flock that we have. And that's what we're gonna be doing, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because the business itself is growing. And and when you see what the people are requesting. You got to give the people what they, what they want. want yeah. <laughs> you know, you can't. If everybody's asking you for A <laughs> and you being an owner, you think you're going to be stubborn. You're going to put out what you want. It's not going to work. The thing about what uh, about this facility here, um, that's why we always urge you guys to be prepared. Let me give you an example. I spoke to a gentleman yesterday, right? And this is this goes into key mindset in terms of morality, integrity, how we run our business. Gentleman called me yesterday, so ready to buy at least 10 pigs from us. 10 females, one male, right? And me being who I am, I started asking the necessary questions. Well, 
are the pins ready? He said, yes. I asked him, so how many pins do you have ready? He said, six. And I asked him, so how many pins can each pin hold? He told me at least two. So then when I told him, you know what? You're gonna end up buying 10 female pigs. Mm. You can't go there in a pen that can, you can't go with 10 female pigs and you only have space for six. Six silver. Because what's gonna end up happening before you blink, these cute little piglets are gonna turn into full-fledged sows. They're gonna need to be served. And if you buy 10 pigs, 10 female pigs, you need to at least have space for 100. So unless you have space for 100, you're making a mistake. So I advise that gentleman to mm. take at least four, maximum of five females and one, one boy, right? One male. So then, you know, he was very grateful, told me he was gonna make sure that he get back to us later on that afternoon so that they can actually come pick up their pigs either Friday or Saturday. Mm. Guys, why am I sharing this story with you? As in in banking or in the medical profession, particularly in farming, you have to become the trusted advisor. Even though it's human nature to try to make as much money as you can, consequences be damned to the people that's dealing with you, you don't want that to be your brand. You want to be the trusted advisor. So when that person in the future, when they're thinking about adding to their flock, mm -hmm. they're gonna they wanna go back to the you. company, the people, who were honest with them from the very beginning, right? That advised them the right way to do something that was gonna end up serving them and their family well, versus us just taking the money, knowing that that person is basically setting themselves up for failure. And I hope you can understand the value in that because believe me, that client, whether it's next year, 10 years from now, six years from now, mm. somebody in his circle Laura's contact will ask, hey, where did you get your pigs? <laughs> He's going to remember that. You know what? The people at Value Farm, Value Farm gave them advised to us me. properly. Mm -hmm. They gave us the right advice. I even gave them advice on the size of the pens, how to set it up, making sure that they have the nipple drinkers. They don't have to spend a lot of money to set those up. This is how you service your community because it's not just about how much money you can make today. It's about sustaining that relationship that is true. for the next 10 to 15 years. So at the end of the day, we're all looking for the money, but there's a right way to get the money and there's a very, very wrong way to get the money. And people will never forget which one you chose when it was your time to deal with them one on one, whether or not you did the right thing. And in this country we're in, the people are lovely, but there's an absolute deficit of integrity particularly in the business sector. So you want your brand to be different and that's what's gonna set you apart. What do you think, partner? Oh, wow, that is really very brilliant. And this is really comes to relationships. Relationship is key in all businesses. And of course, if you're a farmer out there, that is what you should really focus on. Then also what I wanted to add on to the relationship part of it, it's the after sales service. Mm what you can definitely give back to your people or your customers, your clients who come to your farm and get some animals from you. Because sometimes they go and they face challenges. There are people out there, when you buy something from them, that is it, that is the end of it all. They've got the money, they're going to forget about you. But how are you going to maintain this relationship, maintain your contacts, maintain that circle, the network? Because these are the same people who are going to come back to you. At least keep advising them as well. Do not stop at advising them just because they've picked something from you that moment, but also follow up with them to find that how they are doing that side. Some of them will give you feedback, of course, because we've got so many people who have really reached out to us before even us reaching out to them to give us feedback on how the animals are behaving, how they are, you know, adapting to the environment in their farms. But it's also advisable if you're out there to always follow up with your customers, at least ask them, how the pigs are doing, how the goats are doing, how you know the animals you've sold to them are really doing, whether they have a few challenges. If you can advise, it's also advisable. I think that is what something that I learned from my, my previous job, the after sales service, retention team. How are you going to retain this customer to always come back to you and also make sure that they're comfortable, they feel, you know, part of who they are in this in this project. So it's always advisable to follow up, to always reach out to these people, which is really very key for most farmers out there. Do not be selfish and feel like, okay, this is my competitor. Since the person has taken maybe the breeds from you, it's going to be 
doing even much better than you. Some people even go and even become massive. They invest more than what you have from your farm. Do not be jealous. Do not be selfish, you know, to advise the person again. So relationships is really very key. I know we've overemphasized relationships, integrity, honesty. Those are key things. And also do your research as well. If you do your research, if you visit other farms, you're going to get more knowledge. Knowledge is power. But guys, I, again, mm. the reason this is a sore topic for us mm. is because so many times we've encountered colleagues within the space, people that we would want to bring business to. Mm -hmm. But after dealing with that person one time, <laughs> not only do I not want to do business with them anymore, I can't in good conscience refer any clients that are looking for the same service to this company. Because if I did that, I would be complicit. And believe me, guys, if you are coming into this industry, people are not foolish. People are intelligent. People will know. If you do them wrong, they're going to remember. So as a key principle, honesty, integrity, those are just the basics. Mm. Because think about you, right? If you save for two to three years and you want to get into, whether you want to get into cattle, if you want to get into goats, pigs, whatever it is, but let's just pick cattle and goats, for instance. Cows are so expensive. Mm. Do you know how horrible it would be for a, a farmer to sell you animals that they know that are infected? Oh. And then you save your hard-earned cash for a year, a year and a half. You sacrifice, you give up your fancy apartment in Kampala. You move in with your, back with your parents just so that you can go into business for yourself to build something greater. And yet that person knowingly sell you infected flocks this happens so common in goats and it happens very very frequently when it comes to purchasing cows this weekend we're actually gonna add a, more stock because we, we need additional stock here at our farm yeah. we've been selling we've been harvesting right the farm is growing mm. so we have to <laughs> grow with the farm uh, yeah sure but the person we're gonna go with is nowhere near here and even still, even though I trust that person, but because of what's happened to us in the Before? past, right? We bringing a vet. We bringing our testing kit onto that person's facility. So we do practice what we preach. We don't tell you to do A and then we do something different. This is not about, you know, do as I say, not as I do type of situation, right? And so when it comes to us, right? It is with tremendous pride when people come here to buy their pigs, to buy their goats, to ultimately in the future, when we have the breeds to the standard we want with the cattle, you know, you might want to come and get some, some from us in the future, yeah. right? But if we don't do it right from the beginning, how are you going to trust us to be a repeat customer? And here's the main thing. Tina mentioned what she learned with her previous profession. What I learned from my previous 20 plus years in working in the West it's so much easier to maintain a customer that is happy with your services mm. than you having to constantly look for new, new business, mm. new customer. Because that one satisfied customer is gonna tell at least 25 people. When one of their friends in church, at the gym, at their school, where they go hang out, play golf, the moment like, ah, I'm looking for casa, I have a guy, I have a woman, or I know someone. Oh, these guys are great. And, and, and to them, knowing that you're going to do right by their referral to your company is like the greatest compliment somebody can pay you, right? And the, you, as that business owner, how you return that compliment is by making <laughs> sure you go above and beyond. So then that way, not only do you get that one referral, yeah. but now you just get a new base of potential referral. So you don't always have to wait for the customer to call you back. Sometimes it is your responsibility to know and gauge the level of experience that new former might have, entry, intermediate, or advanced. You should still pick up the phone okay. and call and say, hey man, how are the goats doing? How are the pigs doing? You know, is everything okay? okay. Do you have any questions? Or are they eating okay? Particularly with pigs, they're very temperamental. Yeah. When they first get to their new place, sometimes they won't eat for three to four days. The appetites are down you have to do that so as you enter into the space guys 
these are the key principles that we hope you take from us. A lot of people copy <laughs> a lot of what we do and we're very grateful for that. But the number one thing you should copy from us mm. that you should be able to emulate from the team here at Value Farm is making sure that integrity is at the forefront of what you do. Because if you don't have that, you have nothing. That is so true. And they, we have so many people who are really so mad with us because they've asked so many times they want to come and visit the farm, but we are still, you know, telling them to be patient. Guys, just be patient with us. When the right time comes, we shall let you guys know. Because the biosecurity is really key for us here as well. So we want to make sure that when everything is set, and ready for you guys you definitely come here so please forgive us for that because you always call oh is the farm ready we want to come and learn we want to come and see what is happening at value farm in person and even the people who want consultation but they want on-site consultation as well guys just be patient with us we shall definitely let you guys come here value farm is ours it's for you and us those who have been here from the beginning you guys are part of this family so we wouldn't be selfish to let you guys know to come to the farm but we shall definitely work on everything properly then we shall let you guys come and visit us really appreciate you guys so so much and also do not forget to also check our social media platforms we have instagram that is value farm ug then we have facebook value farm tiktok value farm go see behind the scenes and also share with your friends and family till next time bye